Welcome to CSL TV, and I just hope you guys are having a beautiful, blessed day. Now, if you're new to the channel, this is just a review, a reaction, as well as an informational channel. Hopefully, the informational part help you and someone out. And you know, that's how we pretty much doing is watching videos, see what's going on in the world, talking about them. Some of y'all be knowing more stuff about what's going on, uh, the uh, whole situation of the video that you know what I'm saying we watch for today. So I do want to thank. You know what I'm saying, y'all, for doing that, giving us a little bit more update because you know more about the whole situation. As you guys can see, I'm at work. So most of the time when I do these videos, I'll be at work watching these videos. Some folks be like, oh, you're this and that, you're high. Bro, I'm not even high, man. I mean, depending on the day, I be exhausted. You know what I'm saying? Because we deal with big shit. And I do have a family kids i take care of everything like how a man's supposed to be traditional type shit but anyway i don't want to make this intro too long so you already know what we're gonna do over here let's get it now i know i said i don't want to make this intro too long but you know what i'm saying if y'all ever need you know what i'm saying an rv chassis that y'all can see we do that big shit over here you know what i'm saying y'all want y'all new amazon truck because we got that new battery amazon shit over here you know what I'm saying? What else we do? Oh, we got them FedEx trucks, them Frito Lake trucks. You see what we doing over here? And we talking about them big Jones, not the little RVs. But if you need parts for your RV, we got you too. If you got a fire truck and you need bumpers or any of that type shit, tires, rims, everything that you need, we got you over here. Just go ahead, hit me up in that comment section and I can give you the information that you need. And these boys are frame off, as you guys can see. These RVs, these them big tour bus joints, you know what I'm saying? They're not the little winky dinkies, but we deal with them too. But anyway, let me get mine to work, see what we gonna uh, come up on today in this world. And y'all have a beautiful blessed day. I talk too much. 911, what's the address of the emergency? 911, what's the address of the emergency? Hello? This Hello? is 911. What's the yeah. address of the emergency? Repeat it. Is there an apartment number? The flat. It's what? You're cutting out. Can you hear me? Hello? Hello. Okay, your phone's cutting out. Did you say upper or lower flat? Yes. Which? It's the lower flat, apartment one. Okay. Ambulance is needed. Okay, what's the phone number you're calling from, please? Okay, what is your name? Jordan Garring. Okay, tell me exactly what happened. I just came home, the door was busted in, and my girlfriend's been shot. So as you guys hear, we're about to get into a crazy 911 call. Um, this dude just got, you know, to the apartment, and his girlfriend been shot. Um, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, it's free. You'll be helping me out by doing a good deed. Like and comment down below what you felt about this 911 call or any other content that I created. Um, I just be wondering what the 911 operators be feeling like when they be, you know what I'm saying, taking these phone calls. Like, I know when I get my day started, I have to prepare and prep, mentally be there, but not there. So when I get there, you know what I'm saying, this is how I expect it to be. But anyway, I don't want to talk too much, so let's get into this call. Okay, stay on the phone with me, okay? Yep. Are you with her right now? Yes, I am. How old is she? She is 19. No, she's 21. 21? Is she conscious? No, she's not. Okay, stay on the phone, okay? Are you safe where you are right now? I think so. Okay. Is the person that did this still nearby? Is there any serious... She's been what? Okay, we're, I'm sending an ambulance to help you. I want you to stay on the line with me so I can okay. tell you what to do next, okay? Okay, okay. Okay, stay on the phone with me so I can ha uh, tell you how to help her. Okay, I want you to get as close to the phone, to the phone, uh, with the to her with the phone as you can. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay, and then are you, you're right by her now. Yes. All right. I want you to lay her flat on her back on the ground. Yep. Remove any pillows. Okay. Okay. I need you to kneel next to her and her mouth and look in her mouth for any food or vomit. Is um, there anything? Is there any? I need. Okay. Did you think she did this herself? No, she couldn't have. She couldn't have done it herself? No, no, it's a gunshot wound. Hold on. You're inside maybe, with her? You're inside maybe. with her? Okay, can you feel or hear any breathing at all? 
Okay. Okay, just so you know, there's there's an ambulance on the way and the officers are on the way as well, okay? And I'm also talking to them as, at the same time as, that... Okay, are, is that you standing in the window? Yes, yes. Okay, I want you to come out right now. Oh, yep. I'm so they can get in there to help her, okay? Yep. Okay. All right, she, she told me to hang out with the officer. Okay, bye. All right, bye. Officers arrived on the scene 48 minutes after the first 911 call. Brittany was dead, her body covered with injuries, including stab wounds to her chest, strangulation marks on her neck, and signs of blunt force trauma. Although detectives started the investigation that day, it would take over a decade before justice would be served. Man, that's a lot. Man, that's a lot. They sound like somebody who knew her um, did something like that and that was very personal she definitely put up a fight though I can tell you that she put up a hell of a fight but at the same time man after conducting several interviews with neighbors police believed a man later identified as David Call was their suspect but a lack of concrete forensic evidence kept them from pressing charges 38 year old lived about a mile from the crime scene and had been ringing doorbells and asking for money that day when he was taken in for questioning, Call admitted to this, saying he was high. Additionally, Call told investigators that he was a paranoid schizophrenic who had stopped taking his medication, but he denied entering any homes or having any part in the murder. At the time, Call was on supervised release following convictions for failure to update his status and the sex offender registry, as well as driving while under the influence just two of the many convictions against him. A Pete offender would find himself back in prison nearly two months after Brittany was killed. Detectives questioned Call numerous times over the following years. And while incarcerated in 2009, he sent a letter to police claiming that another inmate had committed the murder. In November 2010, Brittany's mother, Jean Zimmerman, spoke to NBC15 in the hopes of increasing the reward money for finding her killer. Between 2010 and 2017, David Call would be in and out of prison. During this time, he told a fellow inmate, Andrew Scholes, that he feared being charged in Brittany's death due to incriminating fingerprints he claimed he left behind on her neck. Scholes had made an arrangement with the authorities in exchange for information, but then he died in a motorbike accident. Then crucial DNA test results matched the evidence left behind on Brittany's clothing to David Call. By this point, testing had advanced. It seemed like a break in the case. In reality, during a March 2018 interview, Kevin and Jean Zimmerman were still waiting for any answers or progress in the case. As a result of active leads, the investigation would not be classified as a cold case which stopped the Zimmerman family from being able to access the files and conduct their own investigation. It also gave a sense of hope that naming a suspect was imminent, but it would be another two years before David Call was arrested. At the same time, Brittany's family was in the midst of a lot. And all I gotta say is thank God for good technology advancing and getting better because a lot of these cases wouldn't be solved. And just to hear how long it took them to be able to find the murderer of this case. Man, thank God for technology and being able to advance. Sued over the 911 call. Several judges have rejected requests for the call to be made public. In fact, media outlets also engaged in a legal battle with Dane County over the records, particularly withholding the 911 calls. A settlement of $118,000 was reached and still, the recordings of the call made by Brittany remained sealed. However, lawyers for the media were allowed to listen to it. And those who have heard it say there is no question about screaming in the audio. Finally, after 12 years of waiting, David Call was arrested on March 20th, 2020. His version of events was even more heartbreaking than imagined. Brittany had let the 38-year-old in as an act of kindness. She had refused to give Call money but let him use the bathroom. When he came out, she was on the phone. It was unclear whether this was the 911 call that dispatchers ignored. According to his attorney, the man panicked, grabbed the phone, and tried to strangle Brittany with her shirt. The attack didn't stop there. 
After the killer noticed the 21-year-old was still breathing, he grabbed a knife from the butcher's block in the kitchen and stabbed her 19 times. On January 20th, 2023, David Call eventually pleaded guilty to first-degree homicide and was sentenced to mandatory life in prison. Man, that is crazy, but my condolences goes out to her family just because it took over a decade for them to figure out what the heck was going on. And it shouldn't even took that long, you know what I'm saying? Like, you try to be a good person and then your life is altered forever. And unfortunately, hers was taken, you know? I know what that means. I know how that feel more than once of being a good person and then your life being altered. So, I just feel bad for anybody that been in that situation of being a good person and shit just happened that way. So, you got this crazy guy out here with the world they know he stopped taking his medicine you know what i'm saying like was there anybody he was around that made sure well evidently they didn't make sure he was not doing nothing stupid but at the same time this guy constantly talking about it and that's that's very heartbreaking and sad when these murders be going five years 10 years 15 years unsolved all because of technology it makes you wonder sometimes, like, dang, they could really be out here doing more if they really wanted to because you didn't catch them. 